Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and today I am joined by a very special guest, Amanda Walsh from Astrology Hub. I am going to be interviewing her so that you can learn more about Astrology Hub and all the cool offerings that they have, as well as a service that I want to uh, share with you guys called Astrologer Connect. One of the reasons that I'm doing this is that I get so many questions all the time about other resources that you might uh, find out there that I value or that I like. I will often share books with you guys that I like. Astrology Hub is something that I've been a part of on several occasions as a guest teacher and speaker. I've been on their podcast. A lot of my colleagues and friends um, do readings for them on their staff or teach for them regularly and are part of the organization itself. And so, um, yeah, it just felt like, you know, there's um, it, it feels like a good a good space to open up. And if you guys haven't heard of Astrology Hub already, then I think you'll really enjoy all the offerings that they have. And Amanda is the founder. She's going to be here with me today talking about it. So that is our agenda for today. Before we get into it, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Share your comments in the comments section. Uh, that helps the channel to grow, as you guys know. So we really appreciate that. You can find a transcript of today's talk uh, if you want to read the written version on the website after uh, the publication of the YouTube talk. It's always there on the website, which is nightlightastrology.com. And if you have any questions about anything you find on our website, any of our offerings, feel free to email us info at nightlightastrology.com. Well, on that note, I am really happy to welcome Amanda Walsh to the show today. Hey, Amanda. Hi, it's so great to be here, Adam. I love being here with you and meeting your community. And I've just always loved having you on our platform. And it's super fun and kind of surreal to be on yours. So thank you for inviting me. Yeah, um, it's really cool to like, you know, to swap with colleagues, do something on their show, and then have you guys come over and do something on mine. Yeah. Um, I've really enjoyed, yeah, it's been really fun to work with Astrology Hub in the past couple of years, doing a few different things and being on your podcast and and actually getting to meet you and a lot of the staff in person at ESAR, the, a conf an astrology conference in Denver last summer, which was um gosh, it was just so nice after COVID too, to like see real people and like, you know, connect and then meet all of you guys who I've, I've worked with and really enjoyed my time with. It was like a dream. I swear it, it, it's taken me so long to recover from that experience because it was so awesome. And then to go back into the virtual world and not be with all of you guys has been, it's been hard actually. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's, it's, um, when I went to, I went to Norwalk, another conference in uh -huh. um, May. Were you guys there too? No. Mm -mm. Okay. I was, I, I had to leave early. So I was only there for like 24 hours and I just missed all the people that were there. So I wasn't sure. But anyway, it's just so nice to connect with people. Um, in, I think one of the reasons that I'm, I'm really glad to have you here is that um, I think that it's important that people who are into astrology know all of the different resources that are out there. It's sort of like, if you like my show, here are the five things that I think you'll also like. And I want to be doing more of that, consciously trying to connect people to other things that I like or that I value, because that's kind of like the, you know, the the algorithms way of saying, if you read this book, you know, 30,000 people who read this book also read this book. Well, people who watch my channel, I think would really enjoy what you guys are doing at Astrology Hub. So I wanted to talk to you about that today and just expose my audience to all the cool things you guys are up to. It's amazing. Thank you so much, Adam. It's so, so like generous and kind of you to do that. And I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, you are the founder of Astrology Hub. And um, how long has it been around? When did you get started? How did it get started? What was the vision behind it? And wh mm. like, what is it for people who don't know? Okay. Well, it started in 2015. It was like a side hustle of mine for a couple years. Uh, the vision was to connect people with great astrology because astrology had become such a lifeline to me personally through a really, really, really dark period of time in my life, like a very big period of breakdown. Um, astrology came into my life and I had my first reading and that first reading just kicked off this whole series of events that made me fall in love with astrology and then get to a point where it's like, God, I think more people need to know about this. Like, I think if people knew what astrology really is, not what I thought it was, which I had just put it in the category of like entertainment in the back of Vogue magazine, right. you know, the little horoscopes. That's, I thought that's what astrology was. And so when I got exposed to what it really is and how profoundly helpful it can be, it was like, God, I, I just think that more people need to know about this. So I'd love to facilitate that. 
And I would love to expose people to real astrology, real astrologers, especially people going through big life changes and lot, you know, the, the kinds of things where you really need that astrological guidance. I wanted to make it easy for them to do that. Because when I when I was going through my period of time at then, it, it was either like the resources were so academic that I had no idea what they were talking about. Like right. I was just like, I'm not invited to this party because I have no idea what anybody's saying. Or they were so watered down that it was just kind of like not that helpful, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to help people in that sweet spot. I see you doing the same thing, Adam. Like you really speak a language that people can understand. And that was exactly what I wanted to prioritize in the vision. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I like the way you put that, making it accessible. Um, I, I sometimes tell people coming through my programs and they'll say like, oh, when you're reading a chart for a person that doesn't know anything about astrology, should you use astrological jargon or not? And I always say, you know, I think as an astrologer, you have to think of yourself as always in the mode of, of a translator. Yes. Even, even if you shouldn't talk, you know, too technically maybe for the duration of a reading with someone who's brand new, but you should educate them a little bit about astrology as you go, because so much of our, I think our jobs right now is exactly as you said, which is to make astrology accessible. Um, it's just in the same way I would compare it as someone who owned a yoga studio for 10 years and watched yoga become more and more popular and that there was less, um, there was less fear of getting involved. Oh, the, the Sanskrit names of the poses and it's something that's sort of foreign and different. And um, just watching people get more confident that yoga isn't some weird exotic thing. Like I, cause when I got first involved with yoga, it was like 2008 and it was popular, you know, but I've, I've watched it become more and more accessible because we've had so many good translators of what the experience of yoga is. And I think astrology is going through something similar. And I love how, I mean, I certainly pride myself on trying to do that, but I love what astrology, what you guys do at astrology hub with making it so accessible. So one a follow up question for you is um, your, when, when astrology hub started, was the vision for astrology hub to be a place of education, a podcast? Like what was the original idea for the offering? It's so funny because I, I wish I could sit here and say I had this grand business plan with right, like, right. all the strategy and we've just executed it perfectly and yeah. definitely not what happened. So it kind of was was an idea. And then it was like, well, well where do we start? Well, we kind of need to find the people that are interested in this. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first things that we did were summits, online summits. And this is where I, my eyes just like. I, I already was amazed about astrology, but then I started meeting all of you, all of you amazing astrologers, all the different types of astrology. So I would interview top astrologers about astrology. The first couple summits we did were astrology secrets to health, wealth, and love. And so then I would do like 30 different interviews on those categories or those topics. I didn't understand half the things the astrologers were saying because I, again, I had no idea how like deep and nuanced it was mm -hmm. until I started doing it. But what that did was it, it helped us find an audience of people that loved astrology that had mainly only been able to access astrology through like in-person events up until then. This was the, these were the first online astrology summits. Hmm. And so people were like, whoa, I can be in my pajamas and watch this. You know, it was, it was, it was novel at the time. And the first summit, we reached about 4,000 people and they loved it. And I was like, whoa, they love it. This is cool. Let's do that again. So we did it again. And that one reached another like 4,000 people. So then it was 8,000 people we were talking to. It was about three years in or maybe two and a half years in where we decided to offer a membership. And the membership was really designed around these, the idea or the concept of these, these women's circles I was going to. I was going to these in-person full moon women's circles, new and full moon, where we would gather around a campfire. We, you know, it'd be, we'd be under the stars and it'd be like 20, 25 women. There would be someone there that would talk about the astrology of the lunar cycle. You know, mm -hmm. okay, Leo new moon, we would talk about the characteristics of Leo and then we would walk with the energy of Leo for the next two weeks and then come back at the full moon and kind of like report on our findings. 
And it was amazing to learn astrology in such an experiential way. Like it was, I wasn't reading a textbook. I wasn't, I didn't even really know I was learning astrology. I was just experiencing life with these archetypes in mind. And so when we decided to offer a membership, it was like, how do we make that, that kind of experience accessible to people all over the world? And that was the seed of the inner circle. And so the inner circle, we have the new moon forecast, the full moon forecast, the astrologer. We have a different astrologer every month. They really teach us about the astrological tides of that month. We walk with it. We have what we call soul work assignments, which I'm sure you remember from being a, a mm -hmm. teacher. Those are like, how do you actually practice these things instead of just thinking about them? How do you like bring them into your body and have an experience of them? The, the teachers teach mastery classes. I mean, we evolved the concept, but that was the seed of the idea. And so that, that started about year three. And then we just, you know, we started adding courses and workshops and we start, we added the podcast and um, it was like, how do we do a summit? But like kind of all year long, okay, well, we'll do a podcast. And the podcast was audio only for the longest time. And then we added YouTube and, you know, it's just been an evolution mm -hmm. mainly based on, where the intersection of our passion and enthusiasm is and what the, what the community is telling us they need. And mm -hmm. so when we find that sweet spot, that those are the things that we just have so much fun providing. Yeah. I had so much fun being a part of what, what is the official name of the, um, the circle? Yeah. What is it called again? Yeah, the inner circle, the inner, the inner circle. circle. Yeah. It's so I was I see in the chart. So the IC being like the foundation of the chart, mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. kind of the roots, the family, it, it's the IC is we the idea is that they come to the inner circle they meet all these amazing astrologers they find like their groove their niche and then they're able to go out into the world with that sort of foundation yeah, yeah. absolutely you know it's funny because so i i was a part of the inner circle i want to say in 2022 it was last year i think i was a part of it yeah. for one cycle and they have a different teacher per cycle and the teacher will kind of work with everyone through all of the major transits of the cycle and the themes of the cycle. And there's this kind of spiritual energetic work that you'll be doing throughout the cycle. Um, and it was really, really cool. And I will say that just so that um, you guys can know how inspirational I found it to be and would so highly recommend you guys check out the inner circles. Um, so my wife and I, when we owned a yoga studio, we had a moon circle meeting once a month uh, years ago. And we hadn't gotten back to it for a long time since we had kids, you know, it's like kids took over and it was like, it's just harder to do stuff. And after that, I told my wife, I was like, we need to get back to doing our moon circles together because the way we would do it is Ashley's an herbalist and we would connect a plant for the month of the moon cycle with, and it was just once monthly meetings, but I really liked how you guys met once at the new moon and once at the full moon. And I was like, I want to do that with our moon circles again with the plants. And yeah. so we, we instituted our roots and spheres offering in large part because we were so inspired. I was so inspired by the inner circles. Yes. And if, yeah. And I feel like if, if people, I mean, if for anyone who there's a group of people who are in our roots and spheres program, and I would say that the inner circles are 100% compatible with the roots and spheres. And you're also going to get things that are so completely different from what we're doing. Mm. So they would be really great to pair together. And also just people in general who are looking for a great way to move through the whole year with astrological guidance and community, those inner circles. Yeah, I just I just loved them. And I love the way you guys did them. And it fueled so much inspiration in, in me as a business owner and, and trying to come up with always come up with new offerings and stuff like that. So yeah, that makes me super happy. That's amazing. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's what we do for each other. It's just follow your inspiration, your passion, who knows what you're igniting for other people when you're doing that. So that's really cool, Adam. Yeah, I want to actually put the Astrology Hub website up on the page now so that people can see it. And I'm going to take this banner down so we can see it a little bit better. Um, so when you go to astrologyhub.com, which is going to be the simplest way to connect with all the different things that is, are going on at Astrology Hub, like one of the things you'll notice when you go to the website right away is you can click on the podcast. And like for me, one of the simplest ways for people to start, and and this is just based on my own experience because I love your your podcast, is I would start with the podcast because if you like astrological content, like the stuff you hear on my channel, you're going to resonate with a lot of what Astrology Hub offers. There's one of the things that I love is that you guys have a podcast network that really features 
a lot of different topics and a lot of different astrologers who come from different schools and styles of astrology. So it's, I would call it super ecumenical. It's, it's like, if you're into Hellenistic, there's going to be something for you along the way. If you're into something really modern and psychological, there's going to be something there. If you're into evolutionary, there's going to be something there. So I think that it's just such an all, it's, it's just a very welcoming, broad-minded astrological podcast that I would say would be a great place to start connecting for people who are like brand new to Astrology Hub. What, what do you think, Amanda? Am I right? Absolutely. I mean, it's definitely a great place to start. It's, it's going to help. It's going to do, if you, if it, if you haven't already had this experience, it's going to do for you what those summits did for me, which was, which is where I went, Oh my God, there is so much. Like I had no idea there were people that specialized in like medical astrology and financial astrology and like, and there, and, and all these different types of relationship astrology and all these I, I, my first reading was with Natasha Alter, who is an evolutionary astrologer. I thought that's what astrology was. You know, I went right. from thinking it was only Vogue to only evolutionary. And then once I started talking to so many astrologers, it was like, wow. And what I love is that there's a place for all of it. Like mm -hmm. there's a place for all these perspectives, depending on what you're going on and what's going on in your life. There's a reason why you might want to consult a different type of astrologer based on your question, based on the things that are really up for you. And mm -hmm. so it's really nice to just like have that exposure. I think mm -hmm. it just makes us better, like better astrology students to realize that there's like, oh, wow, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do this. And then what's my knit? Like, what do I resonate the most with? The other thing is you may resonate with one approach right now. And then, you know, in, in five, 10 years, you may go, God, I, I really want to go down that other rabbit hole that I just right. haven't yet, you know? Right. Yeah. I love that. It's a really enjoyable podcast. And then, um, that you also, so the membership, when we're looking at the membership, I'm just going to click on the membership tab. This is going to take us to things that would include the inner circle. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Now, the thing I wanted to say about the inner circle is, I mean, I would love Adam to offer your audience the opportunity to come into the inner circle at a promotional price right now, because right now it's at regular retail price. Every once in a while we run, we run promotions, but I would love to offer that to, as a gift to your uh, audience, if you're open to that awesome. as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think everyone okay. would love that. We can, okay. if there's some kind of promo code or something, we can put it in the description of the video and Perfect. then people can, we, in the comments section, we'll post it for you guys too. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So, I could. I couldn't recommend it more highly again, just be, just from purely from the standpoint of getting 12 different astrologers leading 12 different moon cycles and just sprinkling their own unique magic on every cycle and participating in that myself, the community experience was awesome. And it was just really cool to hear what people were learning along the way, because I came in, I think by the time I came in, it was like May or June. Mm -hmm. So I got to hear a lot of what people were learning, where people had been, what transits had been a big deal. And that was all, that all played a role in how I ended up shaping and guiding people through my moon circle. And I just thought there's nothing quite like this out there. It's a really, really special offering. That's so cool. Yes. The community aspect of it. If you like to bounce things off people like, Hey, I'm going through a Saturn square, whatever right now. Has anybody else gone through this? You know, right. I think that's the, one of the coolest thing, things about technology right now is that we actually can crowdsource our information, especially when it comes to astrology. We don't have to only rely on one perspective. We can actually hear each other's stories and there's just so much to gain from that. And also just to know you're not alone. Like, yeah. You're, you're not going through all this alone. And that was the other thing those circles gave me early on was like, oh, wow, like this is that that was around 2012, you know. So mm -hmm. I I was like, wow, there's a huge wave of consciousness mm -hmm. shift happening right now. I'm just a part of that. I'm not alone in this. And that yeah. like, that's amazing to experience, too. It, it, yeah, it really is. And like one of the feedbacks that I get frequently from people who come through um, my training programs is that one of the biggest benefits of the program when we ask people for feedback in addition to the training and maybe whatever they do with it or just learning astrology and its immediate benefits is they always like point one b is always the community yes um and my now i have training programs that these experiences are in many ways more oriented toward the experience of community than my say my courses are but i i think that 
like it's like it's the same experience that I have when I go to a conference, which is that, oh my God, there's a whole group of people who speak this language that's flowing through my head all the time that I can feel so alone with sometimes. Totally. Yes. You know, I'm yes. fortunate that I have a spouse who likes to talk astrology, but like as outside of that, you know, there's, unless I'm talking to clients and I'm online in my little office here, I go outside in the world and like what I do for a lot of people is like, it's 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 weird to them or it's out there so i think that like one, one of the reasons i was so excited to have you on is because i feel like some people are living or creating community for example in the comments of my youtube page <laughs> yeah and like that's great i'm so happy that people are doing that and that yeah. people are connecting there or they're coming through my courses to study more seriously and they're creating community there yeah. but i want people to know that there are some really good resources out there to connect regularly, deeply with other people who are into astrology. And, and, and that's why I love the inner circle so much. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. It's, it's a great place for anyone that's wants to use astrology for spiritual growth and transformation. Right. You know that you, yes, you love learning it. You love learning the language and probably your primary driver is you want to use it to be a better person. You want to use it to improve your relationships. You want to be a better parent, you know, whatever it is it's that's the kind of conversation that we love having in the inner circle. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pointing people next to your courses page because um, just like myself, you guys have a great catalog of classes that you um, offer and you know, I'm just scrolling through it now and I'm like, my God, you guys have an amazing amount of teachers, many of whom I really like Judith Hill, for example, I'm just looking through and I'm like, Oh my God, look at all of these people, Adam Gainsburg, Judith Hill, Ben Dykes, you know, uh, Frank Clifford, I'm Cameron Allen. I mean, Nadia's there, Anne is there, Christopher Renstrom's there. So many, like for people who don't know the names that I'm mentioning, these are some of the best professionals in the field. And yeah, it's just so cool that you have, you've managed to really create not only a community space, but like a really high level of astrological education and, and courses that are offering that you're offering as well. Super proud of it. We, we got introduced to some amazing professionals in the field early on who then connected us with the people that are the best. And so that you included Adam, I remember waiting for years until you could be in the inner circle. Like I, it was like, Oh, Adam, can you please come teach with us? But yeah, it's, it's, um, it's amazing to be able to re present, you know, represent great astrologers, great astrology. They love teaching at our community because our, our students are so enthusiastic and engaged at just like mm -hmm. yours, I'm sure Adam. So it's um yeah it's I'm I'm proud of it and I have an amazing team and it's it just it works because we basically create the platform for the astrologers to show up and provide great content and that's what they love to do they love to teach they love they don't want to have to do all the other stuff so we do that for them and they yeah. just come and be in their best. I mean it was an like really an incredible shift for my wife and I when we realized for example that we taught Ashley taught online herbal courses and um, I taught online astrology courses and we also had a yoga studio I would say 90% of our job at the yoga studio was the facilitating of our community of teachers and speakers and of you know people who did sound baths and sound, like all the stuff mm -hmm. and it was like it was a choice that we had to make between, you know, what am I really called to do? Am I called to teach astrology and herbs or am I called to facilitate? And it was like, you know, for us, it was like, oh, we wish that we could do both, you know? Yeah. And, but I think that there needs to be spaces like Astrology Hub that are really like your, your vision of being like, I'm going to be someone who creates a facilitation space for the world's best astrologers and along the way i can only imagine that you've become i mean i know from your own show your own podcast and speaking with you and seeing you that you're you are a fantastic astrologer yourself and i can only imagine that this has also afforded you like a totally awesome education along the way you know it's kind of selfish yeah i'm like i'll just create great content i'll learn but i don't even think of myself as an astrologer at all adam because i'm around all of you like to me you're just the best of the best and like i'm definitely not even remotely in that caliber but uh, yeah, for me, it's like, God, I just get to hang out with these cool people and have great conversations and then share those conversations with the world. This is awesome. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, it was uh, the reason that we ended up closing our yoga studios because we both were like, 
I, I'm really more of a teacher, you know, yeah. and I, I like, and, and, and it, it's just so nice that, because I think that what you see in the astrological community at large, and this is just me reflecting my own, this is just my own opinion, but that we, when we have spaces that bring together, celebrate and support the careers of astrologers and take a little bit of the pressure off from the astrologer of having to wear too many hats at once, that yeah. astrology as a, an industry as a community grows. And yeah. I think that it's just an incredibly valuable service that you're providing in that sense. And so before, but before we go, the one, the last thing that I really want to cover today is the reading that I'm promoting this week for you guys. And I'm um, really excited about it. And I want to give some background about this before we go into it. It's the Astrologer Connect service. My, my readings are about a year out. And so while I'd love for people to wait that long, and I do think my readings are great. And I think that's why I have a long wait time, you know, but at the same time, it's like, I get a dozen emails a week from people saying, I love your work. I'd love to wait for a year, but is there some place that you could refer me to an astrologer? And I'm like, gosh, who do I refer people to? I, there's dozens of astrologers that I think are good. How do I know who to match them to exactly? Because I don't know this person. And I, I've just, I've, I've really been racking my brain for like probably a year now since my, my reading services, the wait time kind of got, well, honestly, like during COVID, like it just sort of, my wait time just like got really long. Mm -hmm. And so I've been like, I need to be able to refer people to a place that I really trust, that I really like, that people can get in relatively sooner. And, um, and that I know that they're going to get high quality work when they ask me that question. And so I just thought, when you were telling me about this service, I was like, this is perfect because I really want my my community, the people who come somehow to my work to have references available and to have reading services available too. So Astrologer Connect is a fantastic service. Um, why don't you, can you, I've already gone through it a little bit this week, but people um, would love to hear from you about it. So what is Astrologer Connect? Adam, it was this, it's inspired by the same exact thing you just said. So people would come to me. I got asked all the time, I want to have an astrology reading. Who should I have my reading with? And I would like, they would think they're asking me a simple question. And I would be yeah. like a deer in headlights, like, oh my God, like I have to pair you with the right person. I, I need to make sure that, that the right person who can answer your kind of questions, who is oriented to the world the way you are. So the idea for Astrologer Connect was to create a place where you could come, first of all, and find trusted, amazing astrologers, because I wanted to make sure that people weren't having those horror story experiences of readings where like they get told something so wrong and, and just like unethical, which we could go into, but I don't need to. But basically, sometimes people don't have the best experience with astrology because they mm -hmm. have a, a, a poorly performed reading as right. their first experience. So I was like, okay, well, how do we minimize that? Well, let's make sure that we we find and partner with the best astrologers who do great readings, right? And then it was like, but how are people going to choose? Like, how are they going to know who to have their reading with? Because all of these are great options. All of these astrologers are amazing. So we created the 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 first name for the the service was the reading concierge because we wanted to be the one to facilitate who to have the reading with. Mm -hmm. But then it got confusing. One of the astrologers is like, I don't think of myself as a concierge. I was like, no, you're not the concierge. We're the concierge. <laughs> so anyways, it was, it was just too confusing. So we, but what we did is we created a matchmaking quiz that asks you a series of questions. Basically the same questions I ask every single person who goes, Amanda, who should I have a reading with? We created the quiz so that we walk you through a series of questions and then we we pair you with the right astrologer based on who you are and the question that you have right now, or the idea of the questions you have. You might not know exactly what you want to ask, but right. maybe it's something about relationships mainly or career or sole purpose, or you're thinking about moving and you want someone who specializes in, in relocation. And so we walk you through that. We present you with who we think would be a great fit for you. You go on the platform, you book your reading. We host the reading. We make sure you're all set up. You have everything you need. Uh, we, we give you the recording at the end of it. Um, and all of this is just our way of making that, that experience of having a reading easy. Again, it's easy, accessible, high quality, uh, and just that you can trust. I, like it's Astrology readings are not the kind of thing you just want to like Google. Like, who should I have an astrology reading with? You know, it's, it's too intimate. It's kind of like finding a therapist. 
you know, it needs to be um, something where you're going through a trusted source and there's a little bit of nuance for who you are. Unless you go on here and you're like, oh my God, Clarissa Dolphin, I love her. I know I want her. Right. Then you can bypass the, the quiz. You don't have to take the quiz. Well, I just, as you were speaking, I just took the quiz. I said, I want a female, no preference for time zone. I want to talk about love. I want someone who's sort of equally data and heart driven. Like it was a really, there's a really nice quiz. And I, before I had chosen a male and had filled it out slightly differently. And it gave me Gemini Brett. And I, I featured that in the video at the start of our week. And um, I was like, I can't, that's such a good, like that is like, I couldn't have on that list of astrologers, like he would be at the very top of my own preference had I not taken the quiz. So I, <laughs> nice. I was like, this quiz is good. And also like, I don't, I don't know Clarissa personally, but through my colleagues and network of people, I have heard that she is a fantastic heart centered astrologer. Oh, so, amazing. and she, she's done so many things in so many places that I have so much respect for. So like, again, like, this is a, a star studded team of astrologers you really can't go wrong with. I know right. most of them personally. Mm -hmm. um, so, and some of them have even like, I, I know, for example, like you look through this list and um, for example, Elodie, who's right here, Elodie's studied in at nightlight and taught at nightlight before in some of our programs, Shannon, who's right here. Um, I've met her and her husband and actually traveled with them in India, you know, so, and Nura, I've worked with at, um, at astrology hub before. And Rick uh, is like a dear friend who I also traveled in India with. Like I, like most of these people, I'm, I'm I just want to make sure people know that I'm not just, I'm not just saying this to promote some random thing. Like these are my people. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you guys will like it. I mean, obviously, if we, if we could have you on the platform, we would obviously have you on the platform. But you're, you're so booked. Oh, and, and that's the thing is, um, you know, these astrologers are also booked to varying degrees. So if you need someone immediately, then then we have people that are, um, you know, have availability sooner. You know, and we do we run um, instant insight weeks where you can like literally have a question and hop on and get an astrologer right in that moment. These astrologers are so grateful that we're taking the administrative burden off of them. Like mm -hmm. literally, so they're like, we'll give you more of our schedule so that we can just be astrologers. Mm -hmm. And again, like you were saying earlier, it's so beautiful in world in the world in general when our gifts complement someone else's gifts and together we can make each other's lives better and we can, we can uh, you know, make each other more successful and and make life just a, a more fun place to be. So yeah. that's, I just love that we get to do that for these astrologers and just make it easy for them to show up and give great readings. Because in my opinion, the world would be a much better place if more people had access to amazing astrologers and amazing astrology. Yeah. And the other thing I love about this, I'll just mention is that um, like when I did the first video, there were actually some astrologers that were online for instant access. Yes. So you could actually see at times there'll be like a little green thing that'll say available instantly or something. And you could literally connect with them like at that moment when you're on the website. Yeah. Um, you can also book according to length, um, cost, like you could, if you wanted to do something by text message, which mm -hmm. I think, you know, like for me, knowing how like simple and like if someone just says, when do you see a transit that might be conducive to me meeting someone? Well, as an astrologer, if someone wants that in like a five minute text exchange, I can do that. That's yes. and most astrologers can. Yeah. And so if you're on a budget, like I, I like that there's options for people with different budget levels, because that's a big value at nightlight is we have a always have like donation based sliding scale stuff. And what I really like about this is that it's also it's not going to price people out because you could go down to a much shorter session and still get really high quality. Um, yeah. and, and you can go by text, by phone, by zoom. It's pretty cool. So when I was going through that really, really dark time in my life of, of massive breakdown, I actually became friends with Natasha Alter, who is an astrologer on our platform, by the way, I became friends with her. And so I got to ask her questions in the moment, which I, where is she? She's right there. Um, so things would, you know, my life was in a place where I, I, I could literally ask her every day, like Natasha, what's going on today? Like, why, why is it so intense? I just got in an argument. What's happening. I were thinking about moving. 
is that a good idea? You know, it was like a constant dialogue. So mm -hmm. I wanted to create a way for people to be more in dialogue with their astrologers, less like, oh, this is the one thing I treat myself to every five right. years. I get an astrology reading. It's like, it, it, that's great. It's way better than nothing. But astrology can be so much more in, in intertwined in your life, just like you were saying about yoga earlier. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, going to a yoga retreat once a year is awesome. Like, right. do that. But if you could have a daily practice and if you can tune in with it more consistently, then you're mm -hmm. going to benefit even more. So it is part of normalizing the turning to astrologers for guidance as we're just navigating our life. And, and as you know, Adam, so much of the time, it's really just confirming what we already know. It's like yeah. getting to a place where we can trust our intuition more solidly. Yeah. I think astrologers can also help us go like, you know, uh, you know, Mars is square Uranus. And um, so, you know, there's like, uh, I thought it was interesting that there was a, a, a like literally a, um, what do you call it? Uh, an, a transformer that blew in our neighborhood the day before it perfected. Wow. And I mean, as an astrologer, I can recognize my power is out. A transformer has blown and Mars is square to Uranus. That's such a nice representation of what's going on. But when you're in the midst of something at work or in a relationship or whatever, and you're like, I, I know astrology, but like I could use someone who translates experience in terms of these symbols to just give me the confirmation that I'm in a meaningful universe, that everything's okay. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I used our own platform on Saturday. I was in a conflict with my love and I was like, do I, do I, Push, push it like and try to work this out today or should I take some space so it was a quick question right and I actually got Clarissa online and I just chatted with her I'm like I'm in this weird funky place like should I should we just take some space or should I like try to work this out and she's like definitely take space you have like a prayers <laughs> happening today like just take some space and it was just like oh okay right. I can just breathe I don't have to like question the right path forward and that that's what my intuition was saying anyways so again, the astrology just gave me that, that confidence to really just mm -hmm. go with that strategy for the day. I love that. It's like make astrology more daily, more, yes. more every day. And in a conversation with astrological expertise yes. doesn't have to be the exact same thing as say the therapy model where it's like once a week, once a month. And it's, you know, I mean, there, there's room for that, but I think the point is that there's room for different modalities of how we connect to this information and experts who can speak the the language. Totally. There's times where I go with no astrological guidance, like I'm cruising, right. I'm good. It's usually when things right. are, are less comfortable. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, <laughs> before we go, um, uh, Astrology Hub, Amanda has been so uh, helpful and um giving us a, a promotion for my audience. So if you guys use AC10 Adam, you'll get 15% off if you book a reading through the Astrologer Connect service before July 31st. Um, we'll keep this up. It'll be in the description of this video and in the comments section. And remember the way to get to the Astrologer Connect service is to start by going to astrologyhub.com, which we have flashed up before. I'll do it one more time. It's astrologyhub.com. And then once you're there, just navigate over to the readings tab and that takes you to astrologer connect. And once you're there, if you scroll down, you can go down to meet the experts and right below get matched with your astrologer. If you want to take that fun quiz before you book a reading, um, but you don't have to, you can go and if, if you click learn more on any of the astrologers, you can learn more about their profiles and their styles and their backgrounds. And like, that's super helpful too. Like you could easily just look through those and probably get a pretty good intuitive sense. But I think the quiz was pretty amazing. So uh, you could take that too. And then you just click on the book now button uh, to uh, get dialed in. And then when you book now, you're also given a login so that you can come back and kind of have a regular portal through which to book. Is that right? Yes, it is. If you want to set up an account with us, you can. That will save your birth information. We'll, we'll just make it easier for you to book your next reading. You don't have to do that. You can check out as a guest. But if you're like, yeah, maybe I'll I'll want to be able to get readings here um, now and again, then we just make it much easier for you to do that if you set up an account. Cool, cool. So the promo code again is AC10 Adam. And if you use that when you book, you'll get 15% off if you book before the end of July. So um, I just want to, uh, before we go, um, Amanda, I've got one last question I'm going to throw at you. This one's like just 
I feel like I have to mention something about astrology uh, itself and the transits. So are there any big transits that you have on your mind for the rest of this year? Either things we're all going to go through or maybe something specific to your birth chart, if you feel like sharing something like that, that uh, you're looking forward to or that it's a big one or anything come to mind? <clears throat> yes, <laughs> definitely Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn again. Because my son is at 29 degrees of Capricorn and my Ooh. Venus is at 28 degrees of Capricorn. Wait, what's that 28? My Venus. Oh my God. So it's yes. Venus. Yeah. Yeah. So I have been in this dance with Pluto and now I'm, I'm still in this dance with Pluto. And literally today, my prayer was because this is a such a once in a lifetime. I mean, not even once in a lifetime. Like a lot of people will never have Pluto sitting on their sun for yeah. like years, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm asking Pluto to just show me, like, I want to take advantage of the opportunity. I know that there's a lot of challenge that comes with a Pluto tra transit. And, and actually the first breakdown I had in my life, um, well, the bigger, you know, of course I had breakdowns before that, but the big one I've referred to several times, Pluto was squaring my nodes. Okay. So now Pluto, like sitting on my son and Venus, I'm like, okay, Pluto, like, I, I know that there's something really big for me here. Like personally mm -hmm. in this lifetime, there's something really big for me that you want me to learn through you and with you. Mm -hmm. So let me just help me be available to that in the best way possible. And that's kind of my prayer. Like I'm just walking with that. Yeah. I love that as someone who anticipated Pluto opposing my son for like since I started in astrology, you know, like, and, and Pluto was just entering Capricorn. I had to wait till it got all the way to 23 degrees of cat before it opposed my son in cancer. And I had so much fear. Like I, I just, it was the transit that I would say has up until it actually happened. It was the one thing in the back of my head as an astrologer, like, well, it's all good and meaningful, but what about that Pluto transit? <laughs> you know, like, what about that? And then it happened. And I feel like it was actually going through that experience that made me, it gave me this realization that like the planets are here because they love me, because the universe loves me and because everything is here to help me. Yeah. And I don't have to be afraid, even though some transits are more difficult than others to, to learn and grow through. But I feel like my view of Pluto has shifted so much because, and now I really have the same attitude that you do where you're like, let me be available to these transits and these planets and not be afraid of them. Or at least I'm just going to keep praying that prayer is my prayer of courage, you know? Yeah. And it just makes such a big difference. So I just, I love that that's your way of approaching the Pluto transit. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's going to happen no matter what I do. So right. I may as well, <laughs> yeah. I may as well find some peace with it and settle in with it. And I know like every transit, we know this, there is, this invitation that if we say yes to that, I mean, look, if I hadn't said yes to the invitation the first time around, Astrology Hub wouldn't exist. I wouldn't know you. I wouldn't be here talking right. to you, right. your amazing community. So I'm so grateful. And yes, when we're in it, sometimes it's like, oh my God, this sucks. This is so hard. But that just keeping that end perspective of like, God, but I don't know the gifts that it's going to give. I don't know mm -hmm. that yet. And can I be open to it? maybe even enjoying the process while I'm in it versus mm -hmm. like being in resistance? So, yeah. yeah, you guys, Amanda is awesome. Astrology Hub is awesome. And if you like the way that she just framed her personal approach to working with the planets, it's that same spirit that causes me to be here with such enthusiasm, promoting Astrology Hub and all their offerings, because I'm trying to find ways of connecting my audience to other resources that I think are really valuable that have the same heart centered approach that I do. And there's a lot of different astrologers who come from different schools than I do different opinions about different things, you know, than I talk about on my channel or whatever. But the reason that, you know, to me, astrology hub is so worth promoting, despite some of those differences between schools of astrology is because I haven't met someone at astrology hub yet who doesn't come from the same bottom line of a heart centered place that I'm coming from. And that to me is the most valuable thing. So I hope you guys will go check out Astrology Hub and all their offerings. I'm very glad today to do this interview with you, Amanda. Thanks for being here and being available to answer all these questions and show us all the cool things you guys are doing. God, you're so awesome, Adam. I like resonated so deeply with you the very first time I heard you speak. And I'm just, I'm so grateful that you're in my life. Thank you. Oh, thanks. You too, Amanda. It feels really good. And it's great for to meet sure. all of you.
<laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, we will see you again tomorrow for more. Bye, everyone.